Hi, everyone. So um, once again, I want to talk a bit about how to analyze things that you're actually that you want to draw things that are in front of you in real life, because if you're going to create this optical illusion of things that are three dimensional and have depth, then when you look at things, you're going to just have to get used to 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 changing the way, not just the way that you look at the canvas, but the way that you look at things in real life. And that means developing an analytical eye and it means that you're not just going to be looking at the outlines that go around this figure. Um, you need to be able to understand, oh yeah, see, he's agreeing with me. You need to be able to understand what's going on in the middle. So this is a neat little uh, laser. It's a special kind of, it's not a laser pointer, but it's actually, I call it a stripe laser. So, ooh, that's a little bit bright. So let me go and adjust the exposure on this thing. So if I turn off right light and then I turn off the auto gain and then I bring the gain all the way down. Ah, here we are. Now we can we can really see. Uh, uh oh, looks like our focus. Can I? Uh, let me turn off. Can I turn off the autofocus? Let's see. Autofocus. Go. Okay, good. So now that there's no more focus, we as I sweep the laser up and down, you can see the slicing that's going on. As I sweep this up and down, you can see like the actual surface form changing. All right. So. This is what you got to be able to do is when you look at things, you have to be able to analyze kind of like the way the stripe laser is working and same thing. I can take my hand. If I stick my hand in the way, right. And I sweep this up and down. Like if I move it this way, you can really see the arcing, right? The arcing cross section as the stripe layer, even here, like as the stripe laser moves down, you can really see the concavity right here as I sweep it up and down sweep my hand up and down through this thing. And you can also see like the, the tendon, how the tendon right here, I'm really skinny, but you can see how my tendon catches, how the laser catches that detail right there. You can really see the tendon sticking out. So this is what you need is you need this ability to understand not just the outline of things, but you got to understand all the things that are going in between and the cross sectional changes that are revealed by the stripe laser. Okay, so let me just put my camera back the way it's supposed to be. I'll turn that right light back on. We'll turn the autofocus back on. Put away the laser. Ooh, this thing's getting warm. All right, and put the, aim this thing back at the... There we are. Okay, can I close this thing now? Uh, no, don't save changes. And turn on right light. Okay. Oof. All right, and also I need to turn on the... Um, here we are. Nice having a Toby eye tracker, but we're not using it at the moment. Okie doke. So, let's say, here's the thing you can do when you're drawing, is that you can start slice planing, right? In this case, I'm not going to try to draw all of the facial features of the, the wobbling, uh, the bobble head, but I can think that his head is going to take up this much space, right? You can see how I'm performing those vertical, those horizontal slices. Now, I guess one way to think of drawing is you are, you're a wizard, Harry. Harry, you're a wizard. And you're a wizard of void magic. So void, void spatial magic, which is the ability to create voids in space. Right? Imagine if you could actually specify a certain area in space where you could destroy anything, you could obliterate, you could Thanos snap your fingers and make anything within a certain vacuum, a certain shape of space. And you could say that area is now obliterated, right? So if you had that ability, it's a very strong ability, but the problem is you gotta be really careful with it. Cause I mean, if, if you're not immune to your own power, so if you were to, you know, catch yourself in the void, you know, and then you zip, you destroy that part, then you'd be destroying any part of you that overlap with the void. So you got to be able to control that void of space. And let's say with that void magic, let's say, you know, you have somebody who comes to you and they've got, they've got, um, they've got a bullet lodged in their body and you want to use void magic to encapsulate the bullet and to make the bullet disappear, right? To pull out the, the, the bullet. So that's, kind of like what it's like to be an artist when you're trying to draw these things is that you have to be able to understand the void um, that would be taken up by an object and you got to be able to do these kinds of cross-sectional this is a way of understanding the space that is being taken up by that object and 
you can see that even though I'm not even though I'm not worrying about um, the individual facial features, you can really get a sense for the proportions for the amount of actual space that is being taken up by the figurine as I as I draw it. And of course, he has his he has Mister he has his cat, Mister Bigglesworth. So that is a way to think of drawing: is that don't look at it in terms of just the outline. Oh, right, and he's also standing on a little cylindrical stand. Think of think of the space, and don't worry about this like about perfect accuracy. You're just trying to get this general feel for the amount of space that's being taken up, and that is the most. That is probably what you what what people really need to um to have. Um, all the finer details and the facial features those can all come later. But this this is like really really powerful stuff. And I got to show you um here. Let me just get. A uh, go to Google Images, and you can find these things called three D printer pens. And the way the three D printer pen is, it's just a little PLA uh, plastic extruding pen. And if you see the way that people are creating these objects, they are just extruding molten plastic to create these objects, right? And so, in a way, drawing is conceptually very much the this type of drawing that I'm trying to teach you is conceptually very much like this is that you're you're not just creating a bunch of outlines you're not just visually tracing something um, you got to be able to do this kind of stuff you want to make the lines hover you want to be able to so here's another thing you can do when you're practicing is you can try practicing like spring balls right so and at first it's going to be oh you know we got an area that's kind of a little bit sticking out to the side. So when you practice, you're going to try spring balls that are of different axes. And you can just fill up pages and pages with these spring balls. And this is just something that you do. I'm not going to tell you how many to do. I'm just saying do them just to get warmed up, to feel comfortable with it. And when you start feeling, oh, you know, like if they come out kind of potato-like like that and you realize, oh, I got to slow down and I got to, you're trying to control it. Right, you're trying to control your sense of space. You're trying to be able to to control the void magic, right? So at first, when you start out, your control over the void magic is very, very unstable, and you can't get a good solid shape. You can't control the size of the sphere of void, or maybe you're trying to make a cubic chunk of void, or maybe you're trying to make a a chunk of void that's the shape of somebody's skull. Or so it's 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 like that's what what you should be practicing is when you're practicing. Uh, it's not necessarily that you should be practicing boxes or you should be practicing planes or something like that. Practicing a box means you're practicing some, like a, a, an object of a known size, right? And in this case, when I do this box practice, like I can perform arbitrary pathways, but I'm very aware of the void that this box is taking up. And you can see that I'm performing little corrections as I go along and it looks like the box and I didn't I didn't necessarily draw just only the lines I needed to draw I can I can make my lines here I'm gonna just show you like I've got the top plane I can make my line travel along the front and and I'm making corrections now because I can see oh there's some missing parts and this is the other thing right people ask me oh is this good is that good and they're you know or is that bad or what where did I go wrong and I'm like you've got to get to a point where you're able to critique yourself. You're able to look at the thing objectively and just say, well, I can test tell that I've dented this corner and I fucked up and I need to try again and I need to, you know, try not to make the same mistake. And again, you can see that I'm, I'm gradually turning the boxes. Oops, I went off page, but that's okay. You notice I don't let that stop me either, right? I can just say, okay, well, the page just cut it off and I just deal, right? You got to learn to just deal with the edge of the page and let it go off and then let's keep on going. So again, I'm continuing to draw the boxes. So I've made that one go around, and then this one's going off into the back. And just because I make a mistake, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to keep on going. You notice that this is all one line, right? Like if I undo redo, redo, like all that was one line. Okay. So and the thing is, I'm really fast, and this is easy at this. And so people say, "Well, how much should I practice?" And I'm like, "Well, are you as good as me?" <laughs> right? Are you as good as me? No? Okay, well you should practice some more, right? Or or like that like I think that I can do this pretty well, right? To the point where it's like I can perform it. 
right? If somebody were to ask you, if someone were to hand you a, a piece of paper and ask you to do it, do you think you would, do you feel confident that you can do it? No, then you should do it some more, right? And that's the thing is that this stuff doesn't get learned overnight. It takes time. It takes actual time. It takes some effort. It's hard to do. That's the price. That's the price you're actually paying. You know, it's like when you, when you buy a big screen television and you go there and with, with a credit card and you see like those dollars leaving your bank account or you're paying in cash, you know, like boom, it's like, oh man, it hurts to put down that money on the freaking counter, on, a, on the counter, right? Like that's the hit that you feel. So when you start feeling that the drawing is really tough for you, that's the sacrifice. That's the hit that you feel. And that's the price, you know, if you want to, if you want to, exercise and get stronger right it's like hey you know the muscles start to hurt the joints start to hurt things there's that pain there's the pain that's the price that's the price that you pay so that's what you should be doing when you're practicing you, you should be practicing until you don't feel the pain of the price anymore all right 